I got this cool 10.1 inch capacitive LCD touchscreen that's designed for a Raspberry Pi to be mounted to the back. It's an IPS display with a resolution of 1024 by 600. It's compatible with Raspberry Pi versions 1 through 4. I'm currently using it with a Pi 3B+. It's awesome to see high quality capacitive touchscreens like this becoming so affordable. I'm also a bit surprised how well you're able to interact with the Raspberry Pi OS with a touch panel rather than a mouse. Tapping around works out of the box, but if you want a virtual keyboard, that's something that you'll have to install separately. More on that later. The Raspberry Pi mounts on the back with the included screws and standoffs. The kit also includes proprietary connectors that connect the USB and HDMI from your Raspberry Pi to the actual screen. You only need to supply power to the Raspberry Pi, and it will handle powering the screen through the USB-A connector on the Pi. The only caveat is you need to use a high quality power supply, otherwise the screen may fail to power on or the Raspberry Pi OS will give you under voltage warnings. I believe it's possible to power the screen separately, but managing two power supplies is a bit annoying. The screen has a dedicated power button and it also includes a brightness control. It has ports on the sides that allow it to be used independently from the Raspberry Pi if you want to hook it up to a computer or something. The capabilities of this screen are great, but it doesn't come in a consumer friendly package. This is obvious from the Amazon listing and is totally fine. The mounting feet that allow the device to stand up aren't super sturdy and the edge of the display is a bit sharp. The way that the components are exposed on the back creates a situation where it would be possible to potentially short something out by accident. Thankfully they put these 2.5mm mounting posts on all four corners. To make this more usable, I designed and 3D printed a case that protects the edges of the screen and covers the components on the back. It's a multi-piece design that attaches together using heat set inserts and screws. My case design consists of a base frame and has a rear cap that covers the Raspberry Pi. I integrated some basic feet into the case so that it can stand up on its own. I also added a cutout for a small cooling fan. It took several printing attempts to dial in the base frame assembly, but I finally got everything lined up nicely. Let's get rid of those cheesy little feet that it comes with and start prepping the new frame. It fits pretty nicely around the screen without having tolerances that are too tight. The screen and PCB alignment are pretty good, but not totally perfect. Because of this, I designed the frame with a little extra space around the edges to avoid fitment issues. I had originally planned to use heat set inserts for 3mm screws, but then realized that the mounting posts on the screen are actually 2.5mm, so I had to order some 2.5mm heat set inserts. Only the four corner holes in the frame use 2.5mm inserts, the rest use the 3mm inserts that I already had on hand. I prefer the bigger ones when possible because of the additional surface area that they have. I also didn't have any 2.5mm screws on hand, so I ordered a small assortment off of Amazon. I'll drop the links for the screen and all the parts used in this build in the video description below. Alright, let's start melting the heat set inserts into the frame. I'm going to start with the 2.5mm corner inserts. I use these great soldering iron tips that make inserting heat set inserts super easy. I'll include links for them in the description as well. I actually didn't have the right size tip for these 2.5mm inserts, so I just used a larger one and pressed the flat face of it against the insert. You could totally get away with using screws directly in the plastic, but heat set inserts offer great mechanical strength and result in a more finished look in my opinion. I'm going to assemble the full case before attaching it to the screen because some of the parts need to be screwed from the inside. I'll throw on my little cooling fan as well. Realistically I don't think the fan is necessary but I just thought it would be a cool addition. Pun intended. The design of my mounting feet results in a very vertical orientation of the screen. This is specific to my use case that I'll demonstrate later. I think my mounting foot design could be improved to have more attachment points, but this is fine for now. Let's attach the case to the screen. If I was doing this again, I would probably buy a different style of 2.5mm screws. These button head screws tend to strip out if you crank on them too hard with an Allen wrench. A Phillips screw would probably be a better choice. I'm going to throw on some little adhesive feet to give the screen a bit more grip. They don't stick super well, but they stay on if you aren't rough with them. Let's look up the pinout for my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus so we can hook up the cooling fan. It looks like you can control the speed by either using the 3.3 or 5 volt power pins. Be sure to consult the pinout diagram for the specific Raspberry Pi that you are using. 
Okay, let's try this thing out. It's really nice being able to pick it up without worrying about what you're touching on the back. I strategically put cutouts in the case to make the screen ports and Raspberry Pi ports accessible. I left some mounting points if I ever decide to print covers for the speakers at the top. I designed the screen to stand up almost vertically, but there are times where I want to use it in a more flat orientation. In this case, I'll just rotate it so the feet are on top. The only problem with this is that I need to flip the screen vertically so that it won't be upside down. There's a screen configuration app that lets you do this, but unfortunately it doesn't flip the coordinate system for the touch panel. To fix this, I wrote a simple Python script that rotates the screen and adjusts the touch panel coordinate system. I also hooked this up to a taskbar button to make flipping the orientation super easy. I posted my Python code to GitHub and I will link it in the description. Here is my setup where I plan to use this screen. In addition to the touch screen, I have a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard connected. I have the screen sitting on top of my HF radio that already sits at an angle. This is why I chose to design the case feet to be almost vertical. Otherwise the screen would be tilted too far back in this situation. The little rubber feet that I added to the edge of the screen hold everything in place nicely, so the screen doesn't shift around when tapping on it. I have it plugged into my radio so I can use software like WFU. I'm also working on a cool little project that interacts with the audio stream that I might show off in a future video. If that interests you, you might want to consider subscribing. I'll demo how I can easily flip the screen in touch panel coordinate system. I'll typically use this functionality if I'm using the screen somewhere else, like on the couch for example. I also installed an on-screen virtual keyboard called Onboard, which is really nice and has a bunch of different configurations. I'm really happy with this screen and I think there are infinite potential uses for it. If you build something cool with one, please feel free to drop a comment. I'd love to see what other people are working on. Well, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this build. As always, if you like this kind of stuff, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. Catch you in the next one.